Well, students, this is our next lesson in this unit four, and we're going to be looking at drawing inferences about characters. So these are our objectives for today. It says, I'll be able to draw inferences from details in the text. So remember, inferences are like educated guesses. We can figure out what's going on, even if the story doesn't exactly tell us. And then we'll be able to draw on our knowledge of the story to add to discussions. And then we're going to be explaining our ideas in writing. So let's begin. Remember, we read story. We read this story quiet. It's about a dog's special relationship with his owners, the master and the mistress. Though the story includes many details about how Lad feels about his owners, we, the readers, we kind of have to draw some inferences about how the owners feel about him. So we have this prompt that we're going to look at right here. Read paragraphs five through seven. What inferences can you draw about how the master and mistress feel about Lad from the details given? And that's telling us how it wants us to annotate. annotate. It says star keywords and phrases that help you infer, that help you guess how Lad's owners feel about him. So we have this chart that we're going to fill out, but before we even do that, what do we need to do? Well, before we even do that, we need to, there we go, so we can see it all. We need to read those paragraphs, paragraphs five through seven. So remember, as we're reading, we're thinking, how do the humans feel about their pets? So let's start. And remember, it wants us to star what? It wants us to star keywords and phrases that help us figure out how they feel about him. So let's begin. Paragraph 5. Of all the dogs in the place, Big Lad alone had free run of the house. So remember, free run means he can go wherever he wants. He can do whatever he wants by day and night. He slept in a cave under the piano. He even had access to the sacred dining room at meal times. So it's telling us he can even go in the dining room when people are eating. I know my dog, he's not allowed to be in there because he's gonna be bugging us so much. Where always he lay at the left, to the left of the master's chair. So not only does he get to go in, but he's allowed to sit right next to them. So that's giving us some information about maybe how they feel about him. Paragraph seven. With the master, he would willingly unbend for a romp at any or all times. So, he's saying he enjoys going on these romps. He enjoys going, what's the romp? On like a play date, on a rough tussle. At the mistress's behest, he would play. So behest means um, request. So at the mistress's request, he would play with all the silly abandon of a puppy. So, huh, he enjoys playing with the mistress like a puppy dog. Puppy dogs are pretty happy, so that's probably what he's feeling. Rolling on the ground at her feet, making as though to seize and crush one of her little shoes in his mighty jaws, wriggling and waving his legs in the air when she buried her hand in the masses of his chest ruff. Well, chest ruff, I'm not sure what that means, but it's saying she buried her hands in the masses of his chest. So even if we don't know what ruff is, we can look and we can see, oh, here's his chest. So what might it look like if you bury your hands that? Well, Rough is probably not talking about, ooh, it, it's not smooth, it's rough. It's probably talking about all that hair. So chest rough is probably referring to that hair. So let's look it up and see if that is a correct guess. So remember, we put chest rough in for a definition. So yeah, chest rough is that hair on his chest. And otherwise comporting himself with complete loss of dignity. So... Loss of dignity means he doesn't care what he's looking like or how he's acting because he has so much more fun. Now, this word, comporting, I'm not sure if I know that word. So we're going to look it up. So let's go and we type in comporting and we type definition and then we see what it pulls up. And it says behave. So he doesn't care how he behaves. Otherwise, behaving himself with a complete loss of dignity. Otherwise, not caring how he behaves because he's having so much fun with the master and the mistress. So now we need to fill in this chart. So we have our evidence and then we have our inference. How do they feel about him? So what evidence do we have? So let me, there we go. So what evidence did you find? Well, we start them. So this is some evidence that I found about how they feel. So let me drag this out.
And remember, I want to put what paragraph it came from. So I'm going to just put paragraph. And remember, that came from paragraph 5. And let me, I'm going to put a bullet point in. And what else did I find? Well, remember, right underneath this, talking about him at the meal chair, or at the dining room by his meal chair. So he's allowed in the dining room. And not just that, he's allowed to sit to the left of the master's chair. So that's some evidence on how they view him. So now I need to state, what do I think that means? So what inference do I have? Let me make this bigger for us. So what inference? Well, the inference I have is this. Lad's owners treat him better and differently than the other dogs. So they probably really enjoy him. So let's put that there. Lad's owners like him better and treat him differently than the other dogs. So we can say they probably have a good relationship with it. Now, notice in here it doesn't say they treat him better. It doesn't say we like Lad better. But that's our inference because he gets these special privileges. So now let's head on to our next part, and let's see if we can't find some more evidence about how they view him. Because remember, we're looking for how do they feel about Lad from those details. So what else did we start? Well, we start on this part over here. It says they take him on romps. They take him on walks. So that's one part, and that came from paragraph 7. The master takes him on romps or walks. Now, what does the mistress like to do? Well, the mistress likes to play with him, and she likes to pet him. She has a good time with the dog, with this little lad. So that's what we're going to put for our evidence. And based on evidence, what can we infer about how they feel about him? Well, we can infer that they love him, and they enjoy his company. Because if they didn't, they'd probably just say, oh, this dog can just stay here, and we're not going to take care of him. But they love him, they enjoy his company because they take on those rocks. They play with him. So that's really what we're getting at. Now what I want you to do is you guys are going to write two sentences that explain one inference that you made in response to the close read and evidence used to support their text. So you're going to go back and look at this text and see whether it's in these paragraphs or elsewhere the answer to this question. Oops, let me zoom in for us. You're going to write two sentences, explain one inference you made in response to the close reading question. In the evidence from the text that you used, oops, you used to support your inference. So remember, your question is, how do they feel about Lad, the dog? Good job, guys.